So far in this Market Noise series, we've looked at three different techniques to improve the performance of trading strategies. For each of these to be put into practice, however, we need to be able to measure noise. And the technique we've used so far in this brief research study is the Kaufman efficiency ratio. But some of you will remember that we also looked at an alternative way of measuring noise previously in this series, price density. So how do the results using this measure up against the efficiency ratio? Find out after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Price density provides an alternative way to measure noise across assets. Although the calculation is similar to the efficiency ratio, it does consider slightly different characteristics of the price action. And so how will this affect the performance of trading strategies when using it? Today, I play off price density directly against the efficiency ratio, using them to inform asset filtering. Let's take a look at which performs best. So far in the research study that we've been looking at, we've always used the efficiency ratio as the measure for noise. But today is when we start to compare this with the price density measure. Now, to keep things consistent, I'll be using exactly the same strategy that I have before. But because I've explained this in previous episodes, I'm not going to do that again now. But what the focus will be this time is to compare directly the effectiveness of the efficiency ratio versus price density when using the asset filtering technique. Now, those of you who saw the previous episodes will be familiar with this chart. And this shows a ranked list of assets using these two different techniques with the most noisy on the left hand side and the least noisy on the right hand side. And once again, the only reason that one of these slopes downwards and the other upwards is because of how each of these indicators needs to be interpreted because of its calculation. But what I've highlighted here are the eight most noisy currency pairs. And if we take a look at those in a list, these are the currency pairs that are determined as being the most noisy using each of the techniques. So Kaufman's efficiency ratio on the left and the price density on the right. Now, it's worth noting that there is a good deal of consistency between these two. And in actual fact, six of the currency pairs appear in both of these lists. And then there are just four currency pairs that don't have any commonality, two in one and two in the other. So we should probably expect our results to be fairly similar, but it's these differences in the ranking of which are the most noisy that will be giving us our differences. So once again, we start from our same baseline, these 12 and a half thousand trades when we don't use any filtering at all and we trade all 28 currency pairs. So let's compress this baseline onto the left hand side here. And I just want to remind you first, before we look at price density, of what the effect was when using asset filtering with the efficiency ratio. And as you can see, there was this huge increase in the performance from 0.25 to a CAGR over mean drawdown of 1.55. But how well does price density do? Well, let's move the efficiency ratio chart over to the left hand side here. 
So this effectively now becomes our baseline when we're going to compare against the price density method. And these are the results that this produces. Now we can see that there's a similar number of trades, about 3,200, but it's those two assets that were not traded anymore and the two new assets that were that have produced the difference in the equity chart. And as you can see, the performance has actually fallen from 1.55 to 0 0.9. And so on the face of it, for this particular strategy, it looks as though the efficiency ratio is doing a better job of categorizing and ranking those assets than price density is. So following on from this, in the next episode, I'll actually be using the price density again and comparing this to the efficiency ratio, but this time for the instantaneous noise filtering technique. And so will the efficiency ratio come out on top again, or maybe price density will be better when using this different technique? So be sure to tune in next time to find the results of that brief study. Now, if that's already released, then you'll see a link to it top right now. If you want to find out more information about what Darwin X does, then you can click the link right underneath. But now until next time, trade wise, trade safe.